Hey, how's it going guys? This is Nick at stridewise.com and today I'm going to be taking a look at the 403 Indie Boot from Olden. So the Olden Shoe Company was founded in 1884. It is currently the oldest shoe company in New England. And it was really founded at a time when boots were really important because walking was just how everyone got everywhere. So your boots had to be durable, they had to be comfortable, it had to be easy to resole them because you had to wear them for years and years and years at a time. The Indy is their signature boot. It's always been called the 405. They've been making it for over a hundred years but I got the name Indy after Indiana Jones wore it in all of his movies. Now, they've always been called the 405. That has traditionally been made with calf skin. This is technically the 403, which is made with a rich, lustrous chrome XL leather instead. So let's take a closer look. So first things first, the Olden Indy 403 has this really rich, lustrous, moist chrome XL leather that really looks beautiful and is very, very soft. The distinguishing feature though is the mock toe stitching, definitely. It's not a true mock toe in that the stitching is just for fashion. It doesn't hold the boot together. There's none of that blockiness that you would get with a traditional mock toe. Nonetheless, it does make the boot seem less slim, less sleek. It looks a bit wide and that effect is enhanced by the welt, which is bright tan color and extends almost a centimeter around the perimeter of the vamp. So it is something to keep in mind as far as formality goes. You would have a lot of trouble wearing this with a suit or with a tie. That said, it is a beautiful looking boot. I really like the color contrast, especially with the bright tan uh, perimeter around the vamp and the white stitching that gives it sort of like a modern yet old timey look, almost sneaker-like. They really draw the eye. They're really great looking boots. And while they're not gonna look good in a suit, they, uh, if you're wearing with jeans or chinos or maybe even some slacks, it's just gonna look fantastic. So first appearances, it looks really good. I did have some quality control issues with the boot. Uh, there's very, very noticeable wheeling on the, some of the stitches. That's when you can see the imprint of the machinery that was used to make the stitches. It's not the end of the world, but for boots this expensive, I wasn't super impressed. And finally, there is a Goodyear welt. Uh, Goodyear welts are beloved by a lot of folks because it helps to resole the boots when the sole eventually wears out. That said, the welt does not extend to the heel, which is very, very slim. And there's a very, very deep crevice between the heel and the boot itself. That's really gonna affect the, uh, the water resistance and it just looks really shabby. So honestly, I was pretty underwhelmed by the quality control. So let's talk about this leather. So as I mentioned earlier, the more old fashioned indies are made of calf skin, but this is the 403 and it's made of a very rich, lustrous, oily, greasy Chrome XL leather. So Chrome XL is a full grain leather that comes from the top layer of the hide of the animal. It's very well known as just being the best type of leather for really durable men's boots. That's because it, uh, it is very durable. It also ages really nicely. It achieves a really nice patina as it ages. And uh, it's just really more preferred by a lot of guys for the durability of their boot when compared to the top grain, which is like its cheaper cousin that's more uniform in color. But again, it's just not quite as durable. Now, Chrome XL is a type of full grain leather. It refers to a method of processing, of tanning the leather. And it comes from Halloween Leather Company, which is a really well-known American tannery in Chicago that was founded in 1905. Chrome XL has a pretty interesting history, actually. It was used on engine seals on tanks in World War II. Um, and when it's made, it takes about 89 separate processes over 28 working days. So a really, a lot goes into making Chrome XL. And during the tanning process, it's impregnated with a lot of uh, greases and oils and waxes. There's beef tallow in this as well. This was a cosmetic grade beeswax. It's finished with neat's foot oil. And all of these different substances really come together to make a very rich, lustrous, oily, very, very greasy kind of looking boot. So a lot of people really like that. It looks fantastic. One thing that is worth pointing out about the Chrome XL is that while it is a pretty durable boot, the top finish isn't all that durable. It scuffs somewhat easily and over time, that top layer can wear away. So that's why it's extra important to really take proper care of Chrome XL as it ages. Okay, so how do you take care of Chrome XL? Everyone has different ideas, which is something that's a little bit annoying about Chrome XL. There are so many boot companies that use it. They all have their own products and they all have different recommendations about how to take care of this stuff. The first thing you do want to do is invest in a good quality horsehair brush. So whenever you want to condition it, it is good to remove the dirt with the horsehair brush and you want to brush it very rigorously because that helps to warm the leather, which helps with scratches because it moves around the oils and things like that. So you do want to get a good brush. Now, again, as far as products to put on them, I talked to Nick Horween at the Horween Leather Company himself. He just recommends a good Venetian shoe cream. That's a pretty popular with boot aficionados out there. It's neutral colored and it's also really good for getting rid of scratches in Chrome XL leather. 
Uh, if you want to try something else, Sophia also makes the Renovator and Greasy Leather Cream. Those are two different products. And the Renovator might give it a bit more of a shine, if that's something you're really after with your Chrome XL, and for a lot of people it is. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. So three products you can use on these, the Venetian Shoe Cream and Sophia's Renovator or Greasy Leather Cream. Now, Alden does sell their own shoe cream, uh, but that's for the 405, that's for use on calf skin. This is Chrome XL, so keep those three products in mind. And even though they are pretty neutral colored, you do want to remember that nonetheless, as you condition these over time, the leather will darken and it will patina with age. That is what most people want over, out of uh, full grain Chrome XL leather boots, but it is just something you want to be ready for. So, with regard to the sole, you want to talk about the outsole first, and it is Neocork. So it's harder and more durable than stacked leather, and it's less likely to slip. A lot of people consider Neocork to be like a good compromise between the stacked leather soles and rubber soles. They look more classic, they look a bit more old-fashioned than rubber, but they have more grip than leather. So the Indies heel comes from Foot Balance. It is famously built for comfort. And while that reputation is pretty well deserved, it does make for a heel that needs replacing fairly often. There are a lot of complaints online from guys who wear these relatively frequently and they find they have to replace the heel after just a few months. You can always have it rehealed with something a bit more sturdy, of course, uh, maybe some Vibram or something like that. And on that note, a lot of people do also attach commando soles to the rest of the sole. And there are also models available that have a commando sole as well. So it's pretty common to see that if you want something a bit more durable, but again, a little bit less classic looking. So that's the outsole. With a midsole, you get a cork midsole. And then on the insole, you get a nice tanned leather insole in there. Um, it is pretty soft, it, and uh, a lot of people think that it could have been made from softer leather, but I do think it's pretty comfortable nonetheless. One thing that's really important about this boot is that in the midsole, there is a triple ribbed steel shank that gives a really nice firm backbone and really good arch support. And honestly, I found the arch support to be really, really good with this boot. There are a lot of expensive boots out there where you just kind of have to make do with the arches, but this one really did feel very nice. It really fit my foot very nicely in that regard. So I was a big fan of the arch support. It felt really, really solid. And then finally, you got this Goodyear welt. So the Goodyear welt, you can see around here, that is generally considered to be the best way to welt a boot. It means that it's gonna be pretty easy to resole once you go through these soles. It also makes it relatively water resistant, but something to point out with this boot is that it is not a 360 degree Goodyear welt. The welt does not extend around the heel here. So that makes it a little bit less water resistant. And I normally wouldn't really emphasize that point because the difference isn't very practical. It's just a very small difference. Nonetheless, with these particular boots, as I pointed out earlier, it really is a very, very deep crevice between the heel and the boot itself. I don't think there was a very good job done attaching the two, and I honestly don't think these are gonna be particularly water resistant as a result. So that might just be unique to my boots, but nonetheless, the quality control does deserve emphasizing. Now, personally, I just could not find a pair of Indies that fit me just right. My foot is a pretty annoying 11.75 in a Brannock device, so it's probably just my feet's fault. But in the store, I tried on an 11 and an 11.5. Uh, I'm an 11 in uh, Red Wing Iron Ranges and Wolverine 1000 Miles, but in the Aldens, I found the 11 was a bit too tight. It was snug, it was, it was bearably snug, but I ultimately went with the 11.5 because it had a lot better arch support. The arch just fit just right. And I'm a strong believer in the fact that the arch support is the most important part when it comes to figuring out the best boot for your size. So I went with the 11.5. I have to tie them pretty tight. Nonetheless, they fit pretty well. But one thing that's really important to point out with the Indies is that they come on a True Balance combination last. So my foot is a D, which is considered the normal width, but the heel is a B, and they do this for all of the Indies. So this is considered a B slash D, that's how, they, that's how they label the width of the shoe. Now, I didn't really find it to be very particularly like snug in the heel, but it does mean that the toe box is a little bit wider, more roomier than a lot of other boots. This is the reason why I really strongly recommend, if at all possible, to try and try these on in a store because the fit can be really, really tricky for a lot of people and eBay is littered with old and indie boots that people tried on, walked around in, couldn't return, but they just didn't fit them quite right. It's really important to keep in mind. One thing that is good about the indies though is that they come in a very wide variety of widths. So they have come in B, C, D, E, double E, and triple E. So no matter how wide your shoe is, you are likely to find an indie that fits you just right, but you really wanna try them on in store. So sometimes these boots can be a little bit tough to find online. Normally you can get them at Alden's website. They're also at Shoemart and Garmentory. I got mine in Lafoe in the West Village in Manhattan. 
Everywhere I got them, including in store, they are $557. The price doesn't really change. Uh, they did used to be cheaper boots in the late 2000s. They were like well under $400, but the price has been steadily increasing with time. So you do want to double check what the price is now before you head out to get some. So that is more expensive than the average boot. They're a lot more expensive than some other boots like, you know, like the Red Wing Iron Rangers, uh, 1000 mile, definitely Thursday boots. That is something to keep in mind. And while they do use Chrome XL leather, which a lot of cheaper boots do use, what you're paying for here is superior craft ship the made in the US the arch support is really really top-notch and on top of that Alden will restore the boots for you for a fee if you send them off to them once they get really really run down so that is something to keep in mind if $557 is a bit too much for you to pay it is worth pointing out that as I mentioned earlier you can find a lot of secondhand Alden Indies on eBay for people who just they just didn't fit them quite right and so that can save you some money and it could save you some time on getting that rich patina so why should you get a pair of Alden Indies? Well, first and foremost, they are cool. These boots are so cool. I just love the way they look. I love the Mokto stitching. I love the tan perimeter around the vamp here. They just look fantastic. The leather is really lustrous and soft and supple. Doesn't need any breaking in either because the leather is just really, really nice. Uh, they just they just look fantastic. I love wearing them. They look good with jeans, they look good with chinos, with khakis. They can look pretty good with slacks if you do it right. You do have to make sure you're dressing well when you're wearing Alden Indy. They demand that of you. Nonetheless, uh, I just think they're fantastic boots style-wise. They're also very, very comfortable. Got this very soft leather insole on the inside. The, uh, it's also got this nice supple leather, as I mentioned. The arch support is just absolutely fantastic. And the sole as well is a little bit softer than a lot of other boots. So just overall, it does make for a very, very comfortable boot that looks great. And then finally, I mean, it's Indiana Jones's boot. Who doesn't want to wear Indiana Jones's boot? There are a few things you might not be quite so crazy about with the Alden Indy. The first thing is the versatility. They are great looking boots, but you're really gonna have a hard time pulling these off with a suit or even with a tie. That is something you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. There are plenty of other boots at the same price point or cheaper that can work pretty well with a suit as well as with a t-shirt and jeans. I don't think that's quite the case with the Alden Indies. Another thing is the durability. They are very well made boots, but there are a few, it may not age quite as well as you might want them to. The contrast here that I really like, the white stitching and the bright tan around the vamp, those are likely to fade with age, particularly if you don't perfectly, perfectly take care of the leather exactly the way you're supposed to. That also goes for the Chrome XL leather. It is a little bit finicky. It is pretty easy to scratch it and it is easy to lose that top layer and the finish and the luster over time as well. Also with the sole, there are a lot of complaints out there about people having to replace the soles more often than they would like. Although some people consider that just the price of comfort. One other thing, well actually two other things, the quality control issues that I mentioned at the beginning of the video really were pretty frustrating. This very deep crevice here between the heel and the boot itself makes it less water resistant than I would have liked. I found that really disappointing. And finally, the elephant in the room, these are very expensive shoes. You have to really want a pair of Alden Indies if you're gonna shell out for them. All right, those are my thoughts on the old and indie 403s. If you've got any questions or comments, make sure you leave them below. I'd love to hear from you and make sure you subscribe. I got a lot more boot reviews coming up.